Well, hello again, and welcome to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host this evening. My name is Charlie Blue Hawk. Last night we chatted about morons craving power and how our masters, the elite, use these simple-minded, selfish, and truly worthless people and put them in positions of power over the various aspects of our lives in order to control us, to hurt us. Tonight I thought we would chat about our history, not the history you will read in books, not the history you were taught in school. Have you ever wondered why history is so damn dull in school? Because you're being lied to. And there really is something in all of us that knows somehow when we're being lied to. You know, we may not admit it or face it. That would be, you know, way too much like dealing with reality. But when you listen to the endless chain of lies told to you in school about our history, some part of your brain puts you to sleep. Now, real history? That is so amazing, so interesting, so compelling. It will not only wake you up, but it just might get you to actually thinking. And from there, it's not too far of a leap to start realizing that you, each of you, is an integral, live, living part of this universe. That you have a potential that is nothing less than stellar. Because once you know where it is you came from, you have a foundation to build a real future for yourself, your babies, your descendants. Part of what we do here at the 2012fad.com is collect our history, the real history of our race, and we will be studying this during the event while being with those that we love and admire, eating well, sleeping well, playing games, singing songs, dancing, making love, dancing Cuban-style salsa well, Okay, it's my personal favorite. You caught me. But we're also going to be working to educate ourselves in truth and forgetting the lies. And it will also keep us preoccupied while the rest of you are, are dying by the millions. You know, it's one thing to see people die. I've seen it. But once we close our doors, we will not really know what happened to all of you. Somewhere in the back of our minds we will keep a small hope that some of you will survive, the, the friends we will miss, relatives we loved, people we could not convince to save themselves. But honestly, if we are not there to see you die, we will always be able to keep some small hope alive in our hearts that maybe you made it, and that maybe you're alive and well and living somewhere, and that you're okay. So that's why we're going to close our doors. We want to keep that hope alive as long as we can. It's a fantasy, but I think we can allow ourselves this, this one little fantasy. You know, again, this is when I will suggest that you do something for yourself. You know, uh, get online, go to your favorite bookstore or library, and look up something called Out of Place Artifacts four words, out of place artifacts. These are historical finds that science ignores completely. Why? Because they're real. Because they do not fit in anywhere within the fantasy of what our masters tell us is history. Uh, I could give you hundreds of examples, but let's go to, uh, to a few of my personal favorites. The Grand Canyon. Somewhere in the vast vaults of the Smithsonian Institute are the remains of a uh, cave civilization of people who lived in the walls of the Grand Canyon, probably to survive what we were about to go through. At the turn of the last century, the mid middle, well, it would be the early 1900s, those caves were discovered, and they were filled with apparently treasures so com complex, technology so advanced, that the U.S. government dispatched the military, the cavalry, cleaned out the caves, boxed it all up, shipped it to the Smithsonian by wagon train and then by uh, train, and then built the Grand Canyon uh, Ranger Station directly above the entrance to these caves so that no one would ever reach them again. 
Of course, they sealed the entrance to the cave first. I mean, it is really like something out of the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, those boxes, those crates, probably went into a vast storehouse, warehouse somewhere, and just were cataloged and forgotten. That's a good one to research. The other one, the, another Grand Canyon story, the, re, the legend of my own people, the Hopi Indians, tell that 10,000 years ago, we lived inside of the crust of the earth in vast, vast cities. But that evil took control of our civilization, and a holy man led a small group of us to a mystical land called the surface. Once there, they discovered white men, with blue eyes and with red hair already living around the Grand ha Canyon in houses. I personally have seen pictures of the mouth of the cave where the Hopi emerged onto the surface of the earth. It's in the wall of, in, in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And the picture itself is really spooky looking. Whatever that evil was that those ancient people escaped must still be there. I personally found this picture so scary that uh, I would not go near that particular cave entrance without a full regiment of Marines and a machine gun. That's a good one to look up. A third example, there are imprints of a leather shoe in rock. You can clearly see that it is a, moder a modern leather shoe complete with stitching. You can see the stitching in the shoe imprint in the rock. And it's very clear that a man was walking through what was once mud. And there's a, a, a number of steps, I think a dozen. So you can see that he's walking through mud that became rock, became stone. That stone is 2.5 billion years old. 2.5 billion, billion with a B, years old. Which means that we, you and I, have been here on this world many, many, many times longer than the short span of 100,000 years that science tells us that we sprung out of the earth, um, you know, <laughs> spontaneously. So, what will you do now? Sit back in front of the big screen TV and watch the game? Yeah, I'd do that if I were you, frankly. Or maybe, just maybe, you will start to investigate your true history, who you really are, and maybe discover who you really could be. You see, surviving the event is not just about staying alive. Just to live is pointless. We will be rediscovering who we really are as well. So when, it, you know, so when it's time to emerge from our caves, from our village in the mountains, we will know that we are truly human beings and that we are a truly ancient people who have been a part of this universe, at least this part of the universe, for billions of years. And we will learn what it is to actually live. But again, we have a plan. The question is, do you? For all of us here at the 2012fad.com, this is Charlie Bluehawk wishing you a really good day and reminding you to please keep a good thought.